Hello friends, this video on P-Block Elements Part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about another important compound called silicones. Silicones are nothing but polymers which have R2SI unit repeating unit. For example, this guy R1, R2, this 2 R2, SI, O in a repeating form, N form, right? So this is called silicones. We will study more about this in the organic chemistry, but just understand the silicones. It has to be in R2 SiO repeating unit. There are two R's. It has to be equal actually. Here both are methyl. If it is ethyl, both has to be ethyl, right? So this has to be equal and SiO and has to be repeating. And it will be there will be two different compounds here. This can be R2 and this can be R3. It can be different also. But these these both has to be R. Right? It has to be repeating actually. For example, this is also repeating actually. You see this part of this. So this is uh, my methyl group, and this is something else. So what I'm saying is, it is nothing but organosilicon polymer, which have R2 SiO repeating. So please note two things here: R2 SiO group has to be there, and it has to be repeating. See the N here; it has to be repeating. Then only it is silicons. Correct. So it is named silicons, and they why? Because it's Formula is similar to ketones. Ketones, you know, R2CO. So since the empirical formula is similar to ketone, it is named sim uh, silicons. Since silicon is important, right? Let, let's try to understand the preparation of silicon. How to prepare silicon? So the starting material for the preparation of silicon is aryl or aryl substitute silicon chloride. It has to be in this fashion. For example, if you put N is equal to 2, it has to be R2 SiCl2. If you put N is equal to 1, it has to be R S I C L Q. Something of that form. This is what we'll use here. Right? So this has to be in this form, right? Whereas R is an alkyl or aryl group. It has to be methyl, ethyl, or aryl group. It has to be in this form. That is the starting material. So let's first prepare this starting material. How to prepare this uh, starting material? So you take this CS3Cl, you add silicon. Copper powder is a catalyst at 570 Kelvin, you get this. For example, if you see this is something which we are looking for. Right? This is R2, R is here, methyl, R2, Si, Cl2. Right? So once I have this two, this one, and this compound name is dimethyl to methyl, dichloride, dichloride silicane, or dichlorosilicane. Dimethyl dichlorosilicane. So once you get this, what you do is you do hydrolysis of this. So once um, we are done with the hydrolysis, then you do condensation polymerization. So we'll learn more about this in the hydrocarbon chapter. If you don't understand this, just uh, think that something like this exists and we'll understand more about this in the hydrocarbon chapter. And this will is the chain polymer. So the first thing was we have to get this aryl or aryl substituted silicon chloride. So this is silicon chloride, right? So I have got this silicon chloride. How I got the silicon chloride? I got this. CS3Cl in that I added silicon and the copper powder was the catalyst 570 Kelvin. I got this aryl silicon chloride and this is dimethyl chlorosilicane. And once I have this, what I am doing is I am doing a hydrolysis. So I am doing a hydrolysis, I am adding water molecule and moving this chlorine molecule. So what I am getting is instead of chlorine, I am getting now OH, right? Because I am doing hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is nothing but you remove the chlorine or any uh, halogens with OH. So I got this. Once I got this, I am doing a poly condensation polymerization. So if you see, I am doing a condensation polymerization and I get this. So this is the process of getting silicon. Silicon, as I told, has to be in this form R2SiO in a in a chain group, in a what do you call multiple of this, has to be there with some RR here. Correct? So to get this, the starting material is my aryl or alkyl silicon chlorides right just to, to get that first i am doing is i am getting cs3cl right this is methyl chloride i am adding with silicon uh, and this uh, 570 kelvin i am getting this aryl chloride this is dimethyl chlorosilicane silane right and when i once i have this i am doing a hydrolysis of this removing the chlorine molecule and uh, with the uh, oh uh, molecules actually and then I am doing a condensation polymerization. Correct. And the chain length of this can be 
controlled by adding CSC SICL with blocks at the end. Let's understand the uses of silicon. The first is it is since it is uh, surrounded by non-polar alkyl groups, so it is water repelling in nature, right? So it is non-polar alkyl group we have seen uh, because it is something like this R1, R2, SiO, and then there you have R3, something like this, right? So in this case, the all uh, non-polar alkyl groups, so they are water repelling in nature and they have very high thermal stability and they are used as sealant grease and for electric insulators and they are also used for waterproof fabric because they are water repelling in nature right so they are used for water fabric and they are also used for surgical and cosmetic implants so sometimes people get this uh, nose surgery done or the surgery of other parts so since they are biocompatible they are biocompatible so they are used for surgical operation also let's talk about another important compound of silicon is silicates so the silicates, silicates nothing but solids with silicon oxygen bonds, please note, silicon oxygen bond has to be there, right? And a large number of these silicates exist in nature, example, feldspar, zeolite, mica, asbestos, we'll discuss more about zeolites in the next slide, right? So if you see, the basic structure unit is SiO4, 4 minus, so if you see, all this oxygen has negative charge so the whole thing has minus 4 charge because they have 4 oxygen and this is the shape in the tetrahedron fashion the most important man-made silicates are the glass and the cement they are the man-made silicates and these silicates are classified into various uh, shapes actually ortho silicates we have something called pyro silicates we have cyclic silicates we have chain silicates we have sheet silicates and we also have three dimensional silicates so we'll not discuss the structure of these silicates just understand that these are the different uh, structure of silicates available in the nature as i told we'll discuss about geolites it's nothing but a type of silicates this is the shape of the geolites actually you see and these are microporous and they're normally used as absorbent they also use for filtering stuffs also we, we have discussed right in the uh, chapter last chapter where we talked talk about the softening of water where we have used uh, silicates, uh, sorry, geolites to purify water. Correct? So, if the aluminium item replaces few silicon atoms in this, the overall is called aluminium silicates. And these geolites are also used as catalysts in the petrochemical industry and also used to convert alcohols to gasoline. And sold, these are also used for ion exchangers in softening of hard water this is something which we have discussed in the last chapter where we talked about how to soften the hard water thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and matchbook thanks once again